Hi, my name is Nature Nick. Uh, I'm an animal trainer based in Long Island. Uh, I supply educational animal shows for schools, libraries, birthday parties, corporate events, and I also uh, do provide animals for rentals in New York City for print ads and TV shows. Uh, my animals have been featured on TV with a few animal experts in uh, the past couple of years. And I'm here today to talk about animal trainers and what we do. Um, unfortunately, so many people don't understand what we do and they, uh, they do tend to criticize us for working with animals and uh, a big reason is just for their, their lack of knowledge. So I'm here today to talk a little bit about what modern animal trainers do when working with animals. Um, many people uh, accuse us of taking animals um, and, and from, uh, putting them in abusive situations, but that couldn't be any farther from the truth. Many of the animals that we use are taken in uh, as babies. They think we're their, their parents, and that just makes an animal safer to work with and more comfortable to work with around, uh, with that, with, around human beings. Um, people don't understand how we train our animals. And uh, whenever you see primates on TV, the animal rights communities will, will jump on the, uh, on the uh, offensive and accuse us of using shock collars or prods. And in all honesty, that is something that is very antiquated. And even 30 or 40 years ago, only the worst of the worst animal trainers did things like that. So um, what we use now, we use positive reinforcement for our animals. Um, Tarzan here, you'll notice he's having a grand old time climbing on me, and that's because that's a natural behavior for a monkey, for him to be climbing all over um, t a tall object, in, in, in this case it happens to be my body. Uh, if he was out in the wild, he'd be crawling up and down a tree, he'd be go up in the canopy one second, and on the ground, rain, on the rainforest ground the next, and everywhere in between. So what we do is we capitalize on an animal's natural abilities and natural likes or dislikes. Tarzan has a really good time climbing on me. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make that a fun activity for him. And if I could show that off during my shows, that's great. Um, Tarzan has a thing for marshmallows. So sometimes I'll even hide marshmallows in my pockets, um, in my clothes, and he has a great time doing that. And most animals are trained that way now. Uh, you cannot get an animal to do something that it does not want to do. Uh, it's as simple as that. When you see animals in, uh, in theme parks doing behaviors, they're, believe it or not, doing behaviors that are very similar to what they'd be doing out in the wild. And they, they go through their paces every single day the same as they would in the wild. Uh, Tarzan, every day, he goes out, just about every day, he goes out and does a show with me. Uh, he'll, he'll go see different things, different uh, activities planned. No day is, is the same as the day before. And that's very similar to what he would be experiencing if he was in the wild. One day it may rain in the rainforest. It is a rainforest and, he, and his troop may not be able to do anything and wouldn't be able to forage all day long. So they would have to hunker down underneath a bush or a leaf until it cleared up. So one day they'd have to hide. The next day the sun may come out and they'd have to take advantage of all the foraging opportunities of new plant growth and new food sources that weren't available in the days before. And then they, the next day they may be so tired from foraging the day before that they may just decide to sleep all day. But you understand what I'm saying. Each day is different with wild animals, and we as animal trainers try to get that much activity back into their lives. So by training them to do these behaviors, it's a great way of replicating this daily enrichment, daily routine. Now, we as animal trainers absolutely love our animals. We are up for hours and hours every single night worrying about them if they're sick. We essentially become sur surrogate parents of theirs. If they're hurt, we're hurt. Um, so that's why uh, we do actually take extreme offense when people who don't understand our industry and what we do are very quick to judge us. So the next time you're listening to someone who's, who's, um, who's belittling an animal trainer or criticizing an animal trainer, just keep that in mind, that you, you, you really should have a very open mind about it. Not all animal trainers are bad. Granted, there are some. And just like every industry, there are good people and there are bad people. There's a few bad apples in our industry, too. But as a whole, that's really uh, an exception, okay? Not the rule. So um, 
I hope you learned a little bit about uh, animal trainers and what we do, and uh, you, you looked at something a little different than you may have before. So thanks so much for watching.